All right, kids, we're going to build a model of CH4. CH4 is a covalent compound because I have carbon, which is a nonmetal, and four hydrogens that are each nonmetals. They're going to be bonded to each other. The first step for this is to write out the individual atoms involved. So I'm going to use black for carbon, and uh, I think I've got a pink pen here. Let's try that for hydrogen. Oh, that's very fancy. There we go. Let's get four of those. Boom, 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 boom. I listed four because there's four in the formula. The next step is to draw the Lewis dots, the electrons around the edges to represent the valence electrons. Carbon's in group four of the periodic table. That's our clue that it has four valence electrons in its outer level. Hydrogen is in group one. It has one valence electron. Carbon is more stable if it'll have eight electrons in its outer level. Hydrogen is more stable if it'll get two. So we're going to combine these into one molecule where electrons are shared in pairs so that each atom is a little more stable some of the time. Carbon has the most available places for sharing to occur. So I'm going to put it in the middle. And then each hydrogen is going to have an opportunity to share as well. I'm going to put one of my hydrogens right here with its electron. And you'll notice that gives me a pair being shared. Now the hydrogen has access to two electrons, making it more stable. Another hydrogen will share right here. You'll notice I've moved that single dot to the other side of the hydrogen. I can do that. It's my dot. Circle those together. Now carbon has access to six electrons some of the time. It's getting better. This hydrogen will share from this side. Whoa. And this hydrogen will share from this side. Whoa. And the end result is that the carbon now has access to eight electrons some of the time, and each hydrogen has access to two electrons some of the time, making it more stable. Now this isn't a very neat way of drawing it. We're going to organize it a little better using straight lines. There's carbon sharing a pair of electrons with hydrogen and with another hydrogen and with another hydrogen and with another hydrogen. One carbon and four hydrogens. We could follow our naming rules and call this carbon tetra hydride. So generally chemists call this one methane. It's part of a family of carbon compounds called alkanes, and methane is the more common name for it. But carbon to indicate one, tetra to indicate four hydrogens on the hydride. Not bad. That's just one way to model it. The other way is with our little modeling spheres. The black sphere represents carbon. It has four bonding sites. I'm going to use these little single bonds here tiny dudes, to connect my carbon with four hydrogens. The white sphere represents hydrogen. You notice only one bonding site was available on that guy. And because it's CH4, I'll load up each of my carbon's bonding sites with hydrogens. Do, do, do. Brand new kit, so they are nice and snug. Good, don't want my methane falling apart randomly. And there we have it. You notice that the four hydrogens are each pointed as far away from each other as possible. Well, that's because each bond is a pair of electrons. When electrons push each other apart, this is as far as they can get from each other. My drawing has them at 90 degree angles. The angles are actually more significant in the 3D model. It's just a limit to this method of drawing. This is still a good method for us to view the four bonds connected to carbon, but the model gives us a more accurate three-dimensional picture. There are other techniques that you'll learn later on for drawing it in a more three-dimensional way.